Let's start with the transom. The transom is made up of eight pieces. Have the main plywood panel, which is engraved with fairing lines and drilled with five millimeter dowel pin holes. These dowel pin holes align the laminated hardwood components to the panel. We have the top rail, the bottom rail, the starboard and port styles along with the center mullion. The center mullion is has this puzzle piece dovetailed joint and these uh, two blocking pieces here made of 18 millimeter plywood and they're rabbited. This the center mullion is rabbited on the back side and these are rabbited on the face side so as this is not just a butt joint. This is a rabbited lap joint. Bottom rail is uh, notched for the battens and the chine log. Now these, this is also engraved on the back side of this rail for the 12 degree angle that the transom sits on. Before you assemble the transom, you need to uh, prepare the notches for the battens, the chine, and the shear clamp. Moving forward from the transom, we have the knee. The knee connects the transom to the keel. It is through bolted with carriage bolts, either galvanized steel or bronze, both available from Glenel Marine. The knee is made of two layers of 18 millimeter plywood laminated. Also connected to the transom is the carlings. These are the aft carlings, port and starboard. They are connected via a block and a screw. The top rail is engraved for the location of the carling. carling goes, the carling goes from the transom to frame two. The gusset at frame two is notched to receive the carling. The carling also has a fairing line from the line to zero. Along with the carling, the shear clamp attaches to the transom in a mortised notch, which we prepared earlier prior to assembling the transom. As you can see the shear clamp is cut on the appropriate angle as the notch to follow the curve of the side. Moving forward, we have frame number two, which consists of four hardwood parts, the top rail, the bottom rail, the starboard style and port style, along with eight six millimeter plywood gussets. Both the hardwood frame and the gussets are drilled with five millimeter dowel pin holes for alignment. Moving forward from frame number two, we have the seat back beam, which is on an angle for your seat back rest. The seat back frame is notched into the shear clamp by our inscribed lines on the forward side of the beam and the aft side. This line is your fairing line for the curvature of the hull along with the line at the top for the deck curvature. Between frame number two and the seat back beam, we have the intermediate bridge deck supports. This support is the starboard 
side has the fairing engraved for the curvature of the deck. It also goes into the half lap joint into the beam and is secured by screw through frame number two. Forward of the seat back beam, we have the forward carlings. The forward carlings attach to the seat back beam with a half lap joint similar to the bridge supports. And the forward carlings are seated against the gusset and screwed through frame number four. They are also inscribed with the fairing line for the curvature of the deck. Moving forward to frame number four. Frame number four serves as the dash of the forward cockpit and is made up of four pieces, the top and bottom rail and the two styles. The top rail is mortised to receive the deck batten, two deck battens, port and starboard, and then has a stop dado for the strong back center deck support, which is unique to the zip kit. It also has the eight gussets with the dowel pin holes for alignment. Moving forward from frame four, we have frame five and a half. Frame five and a half consists of three hardwood components, not four. It doesn't have a bottom rail. It is connected at the bottom by the floor timber which is a 18 millimeter plywood part. It has four gussets with the dowel holes and that indicates shows you how to notch for the chine. The gussets are your template for the notches. Also, the unique feature of the chine brace attaches through this frame and the chine itself runs through this frame. Here we have the notch for the chine in frame five and a half forward starboard the uh, pre-cut notch is the aft side this is the forward side so we have to cut this on an angle to accommodate for the bend of the chine as it passes through this member this engraved area represents the location of the chine brace Now moving forward from frame five and a half, we have another unique feature of the zip kit, which is the chine brace itself. We built this piece in part to eliminate the severity of the bend on the chine, and there's a bend and a twist in the forward section of this bow, and also that the chine is located properly on the stem. This this is notched into the stem. The chine brace notches into the stem. So the chine brace serves a dual purpose. The chine itself is attached to the brace here and then at this point the brace 
becomes the chine to the stem. The stem is attached to the keel and the floor timber. Runs through frame five and a half on up to the breast hook. The breast hook is two layers of 18 millimeter plywood. Laminated together. And it supports the deck strong back and the shear clamp attaches to the breast hook. Now let's move to the longitudinal members of the boat. First we have the keel. The keel runs from the stem from the front forward floor timber to the transom. It's connected to the transom with the knee. The keel also runs through the bottom rail and butts into the 18 millimeter plywood panel. Next we have the floor battens. There are four battens. Two inside and two outside. Port and starboard. The battens run approximately from halfway in between frame five and a half and four and continue back to the transom and also are notched through the hardwood bottom rail and stop at the 18 millimeter plywood panel. We have the chine log, we have the port and starboard chine log that run from the transom that run from the 18 millimeter panel through the hardwood rail through frame two through frame four through frame five and a half and finally attach to our chine brace approximately halfway between the tip of the bow and frame five and a half. Continuing with the longitudinal members we have the shear clamp. The shear clamp consists of two pieces actually it consists of four pieces two port, two starboard. They are five-eighths material by one and a quarter inches wide and run the entire length of the boat. Here again all these members are cut to length on the proper angle ready to install.